Hello, everyone. My name is Neil Kumar, and I'm with Import Classes. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to execute your first Python program in Windows. For many of you, this may be your first programming exercise ever, and I got to tell you, that's truly very, very exciting. Anyway, before we begin, I want to tell you that the purpose of this video is not to give you a complete introduction to Python. Frankly, there's way too much information to cover than can be effectively covered in the brief video. Instead, the purpose of this video is to get you warmed up for a potential import classes training course and or get that Python engine within you warmed up for whatever programming exercises you have in front of you. Having taught our data science courses globally, there's a couple things that we've noticed in terms of where areas, in terms of areas where people get stuck. So what we've decided to do is create a video to address these issues head on. So what we're gonna do is cover a few brief topics, and then we're gonna execute our first Python program together, both as a script and in the interpreter. Hopefully after we execute the code, the topics that we're about to cover will be crystal, crystal clear to you. This video is meant to serve as a great foundation to any of our introductory data science and programming courses. I hope you enjoy the lesson. So what is Python? Python is a high-level programming language with object-oriented feature, features. What high-level essentially means is that it's closer to human languages and further away from machine languages. And typically, high-level languages are easier to work with. So high-level languages need to be translated into machine language by either a compiler or interpreter, depending on the programming language that you're running. And object-oriented refers to a type of programming where programmers not only define data and data types, but also functions that can be applied to the data. The data structure becomes an object when it includes the data and its functions. And it's important to note that in an object-oriented context, functions are referred to as methods. For more information on, on object-oriented programming, please uh, go online and or stay tuned for additional videos that we will offer. But what I also want to bring your attention to here are the two helpful resources that we've outlined. One is from the University of Florida, and it highlights many of the Python basics. It's a great website. Please check it out. And also, we provided you with Python documentation for Python 2.7. Now, if you are running Python 3.5, not to fret, you can find the Python documentation online for that version of Python by simply going to Google and typing Python 3.5 documentation. Now, as you can see here, we discuss scripts versus the interpreter. Essentially, both execute code. and you can write Python code in either scripts or in I, IPython, which is a tool that has this thing called the interpreter. Uh, IPython is a tool that we use in the command prompt in Windows and in the terminal in Mac, and it executes the code line by line. So I literally could have taken all of this code in the script and executed it in, uh, in uh, IPython, and, I would, and the output would have been the exact same. So that's an important no point to make which is that scripts and the interpreter, in terms of output, should produce the same thing in theory. Now, in practice, deciding whether to use a script or the interpreter for your programming task depends, obviously, on the task at hand. So many times, the interpreter is often used to test parts of the code in the script, especially if the script is very long. So I could take, for example, an if, if statement that I'm unsure of and test it within the interpreter to see what happens with that specific part of the code. Now, before I jump into single line versus multi-line comments, I first want to tell you what a comment is. So a comment is an annotation in the source code of a computer program that provides helpful information. And the aim is to make the code easier to understand. So as you can see to the right here, what we have here is an example of a multi-line comment as the text is embedded within triple quotations. So you use multi-line comments primarily for documentation purposes or higher level comments that explain what the following code will do. Single line comments are used to help explain what a variable is that you're defining and or a specific line of code. And as you can see, it's 
single, here's an example of a single line comment. Comments are not executed as part of the code. Instead, they are ignored by Python. Now, variables, what are they? Well, they store pieces of data into specific names and give it an identity. Now, variables can be numbers, they can be strings, lists, booleans, etc. For a full list of variable types, please visit this University of Florida website. Now, there's a couple things I want to mention. First of all, variables are important because they allow programmers to write flexible code. The same code that a programmer writes can be used to process different sets of data instead of being confined to just single, vari uh, single values. It's also important to note that variables should be in lowercase. That's, a, that's the programming convention that's followed. So you'll see that name is in lowercase, age is in lowercase as well. Now what I want to discuss are five common mistakes that we've seen Python newbies make. The first one is single equal versus double equal. Single equal is used when you define a variable, while double equal is used in tests. Often, more often than not, they are flip-flopped. So you'll see a, a newbie programmer write name double equals raw input, and then you'll get a syntax error, or vice versa. You'll try to test if name equals Kate with a single equal, and you'll receive uh, a syntax error. Now, it's important to note also here that uh, this colon must precede a block of code. So if I have a block of code, you must have a colon. This is a very common mistake for programmers that might even have experience in other languages, but, not, but might not follow this exact syntactical structure as we see in Python. It's also important to note that the code block must be indented. So if we don't indent this code, Python will return an error. Now, case sensitivity with variables. So if I define age as a capital A, despite the, uh, the, case, um, uh, the case convention that I just discussed with lowercase, and I try to print a lowercase age, even though I've defined an uppercase age, I will receive an error. Printing strings versus variables. If I try to print unknown employee without double quotes or single quotes, Python thinks that unknown employee is a variable and looks to where I've defined it, and it'll return an error message because unknown employee is not a defined variable in our code. Lastly, when I'm trying to execute a script in IPython, some people will try to write Python space program name dot py. You'll re receive an error message in IPython. You must put percent run space file name dot py in order to successfully run a script in the IPython tool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, actually execute some code. Sorry. Here we go. So first thing I want to do is just walk you through what this code is and then explain some of these mistakes or, or key uh, parts of the code so that you don't make these mistakes. First thing is, this is an example of, e, of a multi-line comment. And here we're explaining what the purpose of this simple code will do. This is an example of a single line comment. So we explain uh, that Kate is 30, so we're going to define a new variable called age and set it equal to 30. Now, in terms of colons, notice that for this if block, we have a colon that precedes the block of code that follows and that all the code is indented. Luckily, with some of these uh, editors such as Sublime, this is done automatically for us. So that makes this code writing a lot easier. It's also important to note that, uh, that for strings, we're putting them in uh, double quotes or single quotes. And that for uh, and that in terms of case sensitivity, we are defining a lowercase age and we're printing that same variable. In other words, if I would have tried to print age, I would have gotten an error message because age itself literally is not defined. We've defined a lowercase age. Anyway, let's go back to the original. So what we want to do now is shift over to this. Uh, command prompt. So again, if you're running Windows, you're going to have a command prompt. And if you're running uh, Mac, you're going to have a terminal. How do you get to the command prompt? You simply go to uh, start menu. And I could have typed in CMD, and it would have brought up the command prompt as well. Anyway, I already had one open, so let's use this. And I just want to teach you how to change directory, because that's an important tool when you're first navigating Python. 
So as you can see, I'm in C users Neil Kumar desktop. Let's say I wanted to go back one level just to Neil Kumar. I could accomplish that by CD dot dot. So as you can see, I'm in Neil Kumar. Now let's say I want to go back to desktop. I would type in CD desktop, and there you have it. I'm back in desktop. Now why is that so important? Because in order to successfully run this script, I have to be in the area where I've actually saved the script. Now I've saved firstprogram.py on my desktop, so I'm good to go. So all I've got to do to run this script is write Python space firstprogram.py. Now I can actually run my program. So let's see what happens. If I enter in Kate, notice it returned her name and her age, exactly what we wanted to do. Now let's say I want to run this program again. First of all, another programming hack, if I hit the up arrow key or even, yeah, the up arrow key, it will bring me to previously entered in code. Uh, pre sorry, previously entered in command. So now I can go ahead and enter in a name of an employee. So I'll put in my name. I'm an unknown employee, unfortunately, at this company. So as you can see, the way you run a script is you have to be in the area that you've saved the code. You put Python space filename.py, and that will successfully run your code uh, in the command prompt. Now, what about if I want to run this in IPython, which again is the tool that has the Python interpreter that we're using. So first of all, you've got to access IPython. So you type in IPython. And now you know you're in it because it says Python 2.7, Anaconda, and it gives you all this information. And you can see a green in. So now, one common mistake that many people will do is that they will try to write Python first program.py and they'll get in syntax error. Okay. So the reason why you can't do this is because the way you run a script in uh, IPython is you've got to, or the interpreters, you've got to write percent run space file name dot py. So now if I were to enter in David, I would get unknown employee. And if I enter in Kate again, I'll get her name as well as her age. Now, what if I wanted to write this code directly as is without executing the script? Sure, I could absolutely do that. So how would I do it? Well, let's let's literally type in this code. Name equals raw input, open parenthesis, enter the name of the employee. space and it so now I'm gonna again test Kate just to show you but now what I've got to do is I've got to write if name is actually equal to Kate then I'm gonna set her age equal to 30 I'm gonna print her name and I'm gonna print her age now it's really important that you go back to the original indentation as the if when you're putting the else block, because otherwise you'll get an error message. So we're going to say if any other name other than Kate is entered in, then we're going to get unknown employee. So now if I were to run this code, notice what happens. I get Kate in 30 because I've entered in Kate initially at the start of executing this block. Now the last thing I want to show you is notice that print unknown employee is a string. So what happens if I were to try to write print unknown employee without double or single quotes. Notice I get an error because again, what Python is trying to look for is a variable called unknown employee and this has not been defined uh, in our program. So if I want to print unknown employee, it needs to be in double or single quotations. Awesome. Well, guys, uh, that's what I wanted to show you in this brief video. Uh, and I want to stress that this is not supposed to be all-encompassing. It's, again, purely meant to just warm you up for an import classes seminar and or illustrate for you some of the common hangups for those new to Python programming. So what I want to summarize for you is what we've covered. We went over what is Python. We talked about scripts versus the interpreter. Comments, in particular, single line versus multi-line. Variables, common Python mistakes, and then we executed the same block of code using a script and the interpreter. What I encourage you to do is to follow us on all of our different social media channels. So our Twitter handle is at import classes, because what we're going to do is disseminate 
first of all, future courses that we're going to be offering as well as uh, locations. And we're also going to be uh, disseminating our free resources and blog posts through those different social media channels. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to watch additional ones, that's how you'll know when we're publishing new content. Anyway, I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and happy programming.